Since water privatisation in 1989, water bills have risen 40% and the industry is profitable for shareholders. In recent years, we have seen a surge in raw sewage discharged into our seas and rivers, host pipe bans and a lack of investment. Offwat, the water regulator, recently stated, for some companies, poor performance has become the norm, this cannot go on. Even the market-friendly Financial Times recently stated, water privatisation looks little more than an organised rip-off. In this video, we will look at the logic of privatisation, what has gone wrong and can anything be done to fix it. In 1989, the water industry was publicly owned and the creaking Victorian infrastructure needed significant investment to improve water standards. Rather than invest public money, Mrs Thatcher sold the whole industry to the private sector. The logic of privatisation was that the private sector would be more efficient and they could raise funds for investment. In the first five years of privatisation, water bills rose rapidly. But rather than use this increase in prices, water companies borrowed to finance investment. Higher profits have led to higher dividends. For example, in 10 years from 2007 to 2017, profits of nearly 19 billion led to dividend payments of 18 billion. Since privatisation, the Financial Times point to a total of £72 billion in dividend payments, whilst debt of water companies has risen from zero to £54 billion. This £54 billion of debt has led to higher debt interest payments, which push up bills. David Hall, a professor at the University of Greenwich, reports that last year the annual cost of dividends and debt payments was around £2.3 billion. The Competition and Markets Authority estimate that customers are paying £80 or 20% of their water bills towards servicing debt and rewarding shareholders of the water companies. And this is a clear cost of privatisation. And as interest rates rise rapidly, this interest cost is rising and even threatens the financial viability of the heavily indebted water companies. Now it is sometimes assumed that the private sector is more efficient than the public sector. It is taught as an almost universal law in economics. But this is an example where it isn't, because governments can borrow more cheaply than the private sector. Privatisation has led to a rise in debt of water companies and households pay towards the cost of servicing it. In theory, a profit motive can increase efficiency, but in a public utility like water, the profit motive is more dubious. Because in a public utility like water, the easiest path to higher profits is to underinvest, put up bills and discharge sewers into rivers rather than more expensive treatment. And this discharge of sewage has become a very visible problem for many who live near rivers and seas. According to the Environment Agency, incidents of discharging raw sewage rose from 12,000 in 2016 to 370,000 last year, a 29-fold increase. Now this is primarily because they've become better at monitoring it, but it does highlight the amount of raw sewage that is discharged. And there have been occasions when water companies find it more profitable to pay relatively small fines than avoid the dumping. And this is a classic example of a negative externality with the environment and people suffering the effects of polluted rivers and beaches. Companies have often sought to hide their own pollution. Only 77% of cases are self-reported, with the rest being left to private investigators, pressure groups and the Environment Agency. Despite water companies being fined for pollution and missing targets, in 2021 uh, the main chief executives received 20% higher bonuses. In total, the 22 water company bosses received pay of around £25 million, over half of it in bonuses. Now it is important to stress there has been significant investment in the water industry since privatisation, a total of £123 billion, although annual investment has fallen in recent years. Water companies can also point to some improvement in service criteria, 
the National Audit Office state between 1990 and 2010, rates of low water pressure fell and unplanned supply interruptions also fell. However, there is a strong perception that privatisation has given a raw deal to consumers and the environment. According to researchers at Greenwich University, between 2002 and 18, Scottish water, which stayed in public hands, have kept real prices stable, whilst prices in England and Wales rose 15%. Yet during the same time, Scottish water invested 35% more household than English water companies. England and Wales is pretty much alone in the world to privatise the whole water infrastructure. France tried partial privatisation of water, but has recently allowed for private licences to lapse and they brought the system back into public ownership. By contrast, the English water system is increasingly owned by a complex network of foreign companies, with companies often registered in countries like the Channel Islands to pay lower tax. The Financial Times report that in a 10-year review of water company accounts, on profits of £20.7 billion, they paid, on average, only 8% in tax, or £1.7 billion. Now, because there is no competition in water, it still requires significant government intervention, with a government body off what responsible for setting prices and investment levels. Yet in 2016, the House of Commons Public Accounts Committee found that off what were too generous, and as a result, water companies made windfall gains of at least 1.2 billion between 2010 and 2015 from bills being higher than necessary. The reason British water companies are attractive to foreign investors is a very good rates of return. The FT report, for example, Mark Query, received returns in the region of 15 to 19 percent, which is much higher than usual for a, a utility company. In a recent review of the water industry, Offwatt did admit that apart from a few minor successes in reducing water leakages, the state of the industry was dire, with unfolding scandals about sewage discharge and underinvestment, despite rising dividends. Yet whilst Offwatt admit poor performance has become the norm, it also seems Offwatt is too weak to deal with the water companies. They have been powerless to prevent rising debt of a payment of dividends whilst investment is underfunded. Naming and shaming firms who pollute hasn't really altered behaviour. And this is a problem of water privatisation. It still needs very strong government intervention to make private companies behave in the public interest, which raises the question, what is the point of privatisation? Now it is true that nationalisation is no panacea. Under public control in the 1980s, the water industry was starved of necessary investment by central government. Fixing Victorian sewers and dealing with climate change is a big task, but it is hard to see what the consumer has gained from privatisation. Paying higher prices to enable the payment of dividends to foreign shareholders is galling when you read about your local rivers polluted with wastewater and hosepipe bans because no new reservoirs have been built in the past 30 years. If water was publicly owned, at least you know that higher prices will be going to the public purse rather than foreign shareholders. Water privatisation stems more from an ideological belief in the superiority of a private sector. But it would have been cheaper for the government to invest directly rather than outsource it to the private sector. There is a lot of literature on the efficiency of public versus private ownership, but many studies show that it's hard to find any statistical evidence either way about a very strong case for the private sector being more efficient or less. For UK water privatisation, one study reported that after privatisation, productivity growth did not improve. Average efficiency levels were actually moderately lower in 2000 than they had been at privatisation in 1989. So we have all the drawbacks of privatisation without any of the benefits. It seems that the average householder is getting the worst of both worlds, higher bills, poor service and disregard for the environment. With global warming causing extreme weather events, there's likely to be increasing pressure on water infrastructure. But the system of private ownership and weak government regulation seems poorly equipped to deal with the challenge of the coming years. 
If you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and there'll be lots more great content like this coming out soon. Cheers, bye.